Right, okay, another kit. Um, this one actually didn't come from Banggood for a change. It uh, came from Amazon. It's actually made, well, I say it's made by, it's uh, branded as uh, KK Moon. And um, it's uh, it's a calculator. Um, so it's a, you know, a little bit different. I have done calculators before on uh, on this channel. I've done a couple, in fact. I did a Spikenzie one. Um, which was for Spaghetti Labs, that is, which, um, yeah, was okay, it was nice, but it was way, way too expensive. And I did another one, which um, I got from uh, Banggood, of course. Where else? And, um, yeah, so uh, this is uh, a, uh, it's more like a, a desktop -y type calculator, and uh, at any rate, we'll have a look. Now, you can imagine that that is the acrylic case, as per normal. Clear plastic with protective paper on it. I don't think we are going to worry about that just yet, so that can go to one side. And then we have a box of many tricks, and you can see here for starters, we've got lots of plastic buttons. Um, and we have, looks like, a bunch of stickers for the um, said buttons. Um, so uh, I have to say the, these these calculators are um, not particularly great because the buttons are usually fairly hard to press and therefore fast calculations on them or anything like that is going to be um, at best an art. Um, but there you go, you can see we've got some clear plastic caps which go on top of the buttons but you need to put the stickers on the buttons first. Put those to one side and we have here... I'm thinking that this is the display. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. And uh, that's one of the reasons I bought this one. Is is uh, it's got quite a nice um, blue LC blue backlit LCD display, which is uh, already oops already mounted on its board. And uh, uh, you can see it's obviously got a couple of chips in there, driver chips presumably, which are all potted up. Uh, so that's already made for you. Uh, and that's just um, ready and waiting to go. So uh, we can pop that to one side as well. We have uh, another IAP chip here with a socket. Uh, I'll bring that up for you to have a closer look at. I can focus in on it. And there we go. So that's that. Uh, we have risers. We have resistors and it looks like two battery, uh, two battery holders. Okay, fair enough. Put out the rest of it. Hardware for screwing the case together. More hardware for, uh, uh, it looks like risers there, I should think, um, for probably... The LCD when it's uh, connected to the board um, at some some juncture and some methodology. I don't know. I haven't seen any instructions yet. We have a bucket load of switches, and these are. Let's get one of these out because these are going to be. Yeah, they're quite f they're quite large switches. And they've got a nice square button on them for the calculate buttons to presumably clip onto. And they're quite firm. And that's one of the problems with these kits. They're not sort of like soft touch keys where you can do, you know, fast calculations. Um, forget that. Those are the stickers we looked at earlier. Actually, I say they're not stickers. Those, that is just... I don't know what that's for. It's got different colours on there. Violet, grey, white, yellow, green, blue. I have no idea what that is about. And there's two sets of them. And they look like they've just been printed off a standard home printer. Onto a bit of paper. So they're not stickers. You've got to individually cut those out. What a pain in the bum that will be. All right, let's whack that over there. Um, get rid of some of the uh, debris. Uh, we have some feet. 
to go underneath the case and hopefully these are the destructions certainly are right so we've got a detailed diagram that we can get from that um, QR code in the meantime we have the installation of the components um, Yeah, we've got the uh, keyboard layout here, and it's got these different colours. I don't think, I don't think the um, is there any LEDs in this? I really don't know what that colour's for. Do we have LEDs? I don't think we do. Got some transistors in there, diode. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, and this is just blue backlit, I think, so I, I really don't know what that that colour, unless there are LEDs underneath here that light up in some obscure manner. I could be wrong. Cool. I don't know. Uh, there we have it. Um, I suppose, actually, looking at the instructions might tell us. Uh... Ah, now here we go, here we go. Calculation of four ring resistance or five ring resistance. Enter the colours of colour rings in turn to obtain resistance value and error. In other words, that those colour markings are there um, so that you can calculate the value of a resistor based upon the coloured rings on each resistor. That actually is quite... I didn't know it did that. Um, and that is actually quite useful, I think. So, uh, yeah. Fine. Fair enough. Um, anything on the back? No, nothing on the back at all. This tells you how to use the calculator. I'm not going to worry about that until we get the beastie up and running. Uh, basic component layout there. Two batteries, CR2032, and I'm guessing it needs two batteries. Perhaps it's fairly power hungry. Um, but detail diagram, I think probably what I might do is pull that up uh, and uh, have a little look. And um, let me get my phone and see what uh, see what it shows us. Right, so we have a QR code there. Then. Open that up on Safari. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thinking about it. Hmm, okay. Well, it's obviously struggling a bit to open that page. I don't know if that's my phone or... Uh, all the server can't be found. Well... All I can suggest, therefore, is that let's try that again. Could be a cock up on reading the. Well, it's immediately gone there. Let's get rid of that and try again. And oh, now, come on, just read. Um, right, okay. Let me start again. Well, this is going well, isn't it? Can't even find the ruddy instructions for it. Uh, right, one more time. There we go. Yeah, it's gone straight there again. Um, but it can't find that page. We could be working blind on this. Um, okay, well. We leave at least, I mean, the actual components, let's pull out the electronics first because they're the main things. Um, so we have the main chip, then let's open this little bag of tricks. Uh, and this is just going to be, I mean, the main thing is knowing where the resistors go, which that diagram looks like it's going to show us, and also orientation of the diode and all that sort of good stuff. 
So um, I'm thinking that what we do is uh, sort all of that out first. We don't need the hardware, plastic buttons, get all those out of the way. Everything's falling on the floor. I mean, in terms of actual electronics, that's, that's really a lot. In fact, if you take the battery components and the, the risers out of the equation, there isn't much left. I don't know what these are going to be used for. Um, but uh, yeah, I might have to do some digging around on the internet because obviously that, that, um, that address is not working. Uh, but it does look as if I'm going to have to cut all of these out. Um, very carefully with a scalpel or something. It's a bit of a shame really because the actual print quality on these Let me bring it closer Yeah, there you go. If you look at that the print quality is not very good So the resolution of the printer, I don't know if I can actually find this and Although my printer isn't anything special. I reckon it could do a better job than that uh, that isn't very nice at all. So I am actually going to go onto the internet, see if I can find the instructions. Um, if not, we're just going to have to wing it. Mind you, hardly the first time since I've done that. Well, I had a good look around the tinternet and I, I couldn't find any instructions for it um, other than obviously this web address which... Um, doesn't work but never mind I might have another look around at a later date uh, before I get on to the less than obvious bits and pieces I mean a lot of this we can do we can fit all the switches on um, <coughs> the the actual display ac actually rises at an angle like that so um, uh, the acrylic case will have a section that goes on top of it there um, and somehow that's held up like that I think the only thing I'm not sure of is how uh, these these risers clip in and operate because obviously they go in there like that I can't imagine they go around the other way that wouldn't work at all. So, at any rate, um, going to have to um, figure that out as we go along. But in the meantime, we can do the components, which uh, we can see here. So, uh, what shall we start off with? I think we will do the resistors, and we have got. R3 is 10k and they have actually marked have they marked the values? Um, I think they might have done actually yeah they're either 10k <coughs> so we've got a 10k, a 10k 10k, 1k and that's it. So these are marked as 10. These are marked as 1. And these aren't marked at all. And I'm just going to get my eyes closer to it. To see if I can see what value they are. And they are a different value to everything else. So, but I'm not going to leave this to chance. I think one of the golden rules is when you're doing these kits is um, always always check the values yourself. If you, if like me, you can't just look at the colours on a resistor and immediately read them because you know off the top of your head what um, what those colours are. Uh, now, I was about to use this, which is my tester, 
and it's not working. And I think the reason it's not working is because I left it switched on, the battery dead. However, oh, what a apocalyptic pain in the bum that is. Right, so um, <clears throat> I need to get my cheap and cheerful multimeter out. And uh, ah, here we go. So we have uh, got up to six K, and we'll see what these and the value of these resistors are. That's point three of a K. Put down 600 ohms. Uh, it's 330 ohms. I didn't see on there. Okay, so that's 330 ohms. Let's put them to one side. So these ones, these should be 10k. So let's check these. Oop. Uh, no, that's going to be out of range. Stay still. Why are you not reading? Everything's going wrong today. That doesn't seem to want to ring. I'm going to put it on hold, have I? Uh, couldn't possibly have been. Oh, well, I remember that I was on 6K, so it was out of range. Stupid boy. There you go, 10k. So these are 10k, so that is correct, what they've written on there. And these <coughs> should be 1k. If I can get them to stay. And they are dead on 1k. Excellent, right. So that's that. We know the others are 330 ohms. Let's switch that off, pop that down there like that. So let's start off by populating the 10k, which ones are the 10k? That's these, so let's put those to one side. So we have got 10k going in. It's actually marked, you can see it's marked on the silk screen as well. The actual value is 10k, 1k and all the rest of it. So that's, uh, that's good. Looks like a little bit easier. Sometimes they don't. They just put the number of a resistor. And I guess it really depends on how busy the uh, board is. If there's lots and lots of components on there, then there's not enough room necessarily for uh, putting the silk screen on uh, to uh, cover the names or the values of the resistors as well. I don't know if you're seeing any of this. A bit pointless if you're not, let's be honest. 10k, 10k. Um, and I think there must be. Ah, oh, there's a 330. There, there you go, 330 ohms. Right, so we know where that goes. Any more 10k's? So it's just those two. Oh, that's a 10k. Pop that in there as well. Keep on going off camera. I just I just bend the pins back like that. Just make just holds them in there while he's soldering them, and then uh, clip them down later. Shall I put the one case in? Where are they? I'm now losing everything, which is not a good idea. What did I do with those? They shot off somewhere. Um, oh, there they are. Over here. So these are the one case. I don't know how many of these I need. Some kits give you exactly the number of components you need and some will give you um, a few
few extra. And I guess in some respects it very much depends on, um, you know, uh, effort because if you've got to manually pick these out by hand and put them in their individual plastic bags, uh, it's going to be pretty labour intensive, isn't it? So, okay, a couple of diodes there. That's the capacitor, the ceramic capacitor there. Um, 330 ohm resistor there. Let's do that one now. I might have a spare 1K there. Okay, so this is one of the 330 ohms. And that can live in there like that. And I think what we will do is we will start soldering some of this stuff before we get too carried away by putting in too many components when you get to the stage that you've got so many in there that you can't get your soldering iron in there and uh, fit it all up. Now, excuse me, I am going to move the camera around a little bit so I can bring this closer to me. And uh, we can start uh, we can start doing a bit of soldering. Um, come on, oh, I thought my iron is heated up by now. You'd think, but it doesn't seem to want to. There we go. It's tiny amounts of solder, and again, I'm using this very, very thin solder. So. By using the thin stuff, you can uh, get more control over it, over how much of the solder you flow into the connectors. I don't multitask well, so talking and soldering at the same time is not a skill I've developed. And uh, do these guys here. more there. And uh, have we got any more to do? I think. <coughs> I think that's it for the moment. And now get my snips. I <coughs> bought some new snips from a local hobby shop. Um, one of the problems I have is I buy snips and frankly they go blunt and the edges get all chipped up and broken in no time. These are stainless steel, apparently, and I'm hoping that these will last. And uh, I actually bought two pairs of these because if these do turn out to be a bit crap, then it'll be a while longer before I need to uh, buy any more. But having said that, um, I mean, you probably can sharpen up uh, snips like this, but frankly, if they do get eaten up that easily, then what I need to do is go and hunt down a very, very good quality pair and um, be prepared to pay decent money for decent equipment instead of being cheap which is what I normally do okay right next thing is the diodes I think we'll put those in and they uh, they live in there diodes you see the black bar on the diode there that will correspond with that white bar on the um, silk screen print so I've got two of these, getting the right way around. They can all live in now. Like that. And the other one in there like that. I'm 
conscious of the fact I may not be getting this in shot all the time because I'm zoomed in here so the field of view is reduced. But I don't think I've bent these legs. This is awful. Shouldn't be doing this. It's putting strain on the compact. Right, okay. If in doubt, pull it out and start again. What a mess I made of that. Wow. I also bought some new nose uh, nose point pliers. Um, these are okay. And again, I think they're stainless steel. Or put it this way, they appear to be made out of metal, which is superior to the junk. I normally uh, use so uh, like I say I think that at the end of the day if you're going to get into a hobby of any type which requires tools and you intend to do a lot of that hobby then investing in good good equipment is uh, probably sensible um, and it's a false economy to uh, buy frankly cheap crap uh, let's let's, let's uh, solder these diodes in uh, there's me sealed air get these done the other reason I like to use the thinner solder is theoretically uh, it melts that much quicker which means that you are applying heat to components theoretically for a shorter period of time well that's where I look at it um, and uh, which means you reduce the uh, the possibility of damaging those components very true for things like LEDs which um, too much heat applied to an LED uh, for too long a period can be a bad thing. Right, next we have the 104 capacitor which lives in there. Let's pop that one in. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, my mind is going to pieces. You know, I'm one of these people, I pick a tool up, put it down, go looking for it again, can't find it. It's my age, you know. Starting to lose it. As if I hadn't lost it in the first place. Right, there we go. So that's where we are at the moment. Uh, 10k, 1k, 330 ohms, a couple of 10ks there, 104. Um, then we've got the transistors, and we can see that these have got different numbers on them. So let's have a look at the transistors and see if I can put a bit more light on the subject. And what does that say? That says. It's an S8550. From what I can see there, have a look at the board. 8550. So that one, spread the legs out a little bit. There's a joke somewhere there. I think it goes that way, and you can see that, um, if I can focus it, you can see the shape of the transistor is effectively emulated on the silk screen, so you know the correct orientation of the base emitter and collector. And I'm just going to gently wobble that down as flat as I can. Uh, 
That's, um, I'm doing that. I'm actually looking through the camera as I do this. Excuse me, I'm going to take it away and try and do it right under my nose so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so that's that one. Right. There we go. Now, this one is... There it is. Focus, you swine. 7550A-1. Seven five five zero dash one. So it's going to be that one, isn't it? So again, I'm just going to pop these through, get it down as low as I can. Right, whoops! Right, damaging. Not very pretty, I know. I'll straighten them out later. What I tend to do is um, just solder a couple of uh, one of the pins and then straighten it out. Usually the center pin. Is that the collector as an emitter, or was that the base? Well, it might be the base actually. God. There we go. In process of elimination, the last transistor because there are no others in the kit will live. In that slot there. And uh, just bend the pins a bit to stop them falling back out. It's a bit high that one, but never mind. Okay, <clears throat> so let's um, do a bit of soldering. That center pin. that center pin and I'm, again I'm looking through the viewfinder of the camera here and I really shouldn't be doing that but um, not only does it make sure that no, this is not working through the viewfinder of the camera let me uh, let me try and be sensible the problem is is that um, I mean my eyesight is pretty pretty awful frankly and uh, I normally use um, a magnifier like this um, it's got a like that perhaps that's what I should be doing really the trouble is is that with the camera and all the rest of it not too bad actually perhaps I'll try that in future but I, I can't sort of see it and let you see it at the same time so it all gets very complicated um, well there we go so that's uh, the transistors are reasonably straight. Straight enough for my purposes, that's for sure. Uh, <coughs> nobody ever accused me of being a perfectionist, not by any stretch. Uh, okay, so let's finish soldering these last few components and then all the transistor legs you're barely seeing that and
dog's dinner of this. And one more. Okay, and next thing to do, just snip off these legs. Yeah, these snips are way better than the rubbish that I had before. I do, I do hope they last. They feel nice quality, that's for sure. But, uh, <coughs> oops, missed one. Okay. <coughs> now, I think the next thing to do is to take the IC socket. And you see there's the half moon notch. There's the half moon notch on the PCB. So half moon to half moon, that will go in there, like that. So what I'll do is I will just solder one pin and then Inspect to see how flat that is to the board. Oops. And that is completely flat, so that's good. So I will then go to the opposite corner. And that should mean that the socket is now nicely held in there whilst I solder these remaining pins this makes life a little easier now what I'm going to do I'm going to zoom out again and let's try popping that over there right now bring it here then bring that there and we can both see what's going on then that's a theory anyway right? Trouble is, being left-handed, I do everything back the front. Uh, I feel like I should be working these right to left, rather than left to right, but like I say, I'm back-handed. Add it's small amounts of solder. Just enough to drop and flow into place. Like that, and that one's okay. Again, I've normally got my nose closer to the uh, the magnifying glass to see this. It's still not brilliantly clear for me, but it's better than not having it. Such is the case with aging eyes. But what I will do is I will bring the board up to my nose and inspect each shoulder joint just to make sure I haven't done anything silly. Running out of solder here, look. I'm going to go cheap and try and get as much mileage out of this bit of solder as I possibly can. Try to get a new bit out. Which is going to be now because that is going to, otherwise, I'll be soldering my fingers to the board as well. And that might hurt. Okay, so there we have it. That's uh, the socket in, and 
three transistors, five resistors and a couple of diodes. Uh, probably took longer than it should have done, but I'm sort of just driveling away as usual while I'm doing it. So, next thing we all probably need to do, I mean what I could do of course is I could populate the actual chip. Um, normally what I do is try and bend the pins in a little bit. There are special tools that you can get. You see I've knackered that pin up there now. I do hope this is not static resist uh, sensitive. If it is I'll just blow that up. Um, you can get special tools that, that crimp the sides of the uh, chip together. Um, just to bend them in a, oh, it's all in there, bent there. Uh, just to bend them in a little bit, so um, they fit into the socket neatly. Let's just check. Now you see that's not in. It's gone in one side, and not to the other, because. Oh, now I've done it too much. Ugh. What a colossal moron. Oh, I hate these large chips going into sockets. Does my head in. It's not very dexterous. Come on. Right, I'm going to have to do this off camera. I can't seem to get this. I can't really see what I'm doing. I'm certainly going to have to get myself one of those tools that bend the pins in nice and neatly so that you can get them into sockets without all this palaver. And... Uh, of course, risk damaging the chip in the process. Come on. Right. Okay, got it in in the end. There she is. And of course the half moon on the chip itself all matches up with the socket and the uh, PCB. I mean, to be brutally honest, I see absolutely no reason why the chip shouldn't be soldered directly to the board. Perhaps there's a reason. If there is a reason, I haven't got a clue what that reason is. But there you go. That's it for the electronics. Right, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, get the battery holders in there and also I think I might put the, uh, the switches in. The battery holder goes in that way, so you've got a little tab that goes on the inside. In fact, there's even a little um, mark on the silk screen to show you the orientation. So. What I'm going to do is, is it doesn't actually give you much much room for the pins to go through, so you can't really bend them. I think what I'm going to do, just to help me out, is I'm just going to hold it in place with one of these things, just while I Solder it. Uh, yeah, like that, I'll do. I need to get one side in and then uh, we should be good to go. Something just fell on the floor. And you just know it's going to be a really critical component. And I'll find that in a minute. 
Okay, so uh, let's solder this on. Yeah. Need to really heat these pads up so you can get the solder to flow because obviously it's a large surface area and it acts as a heat sink and um, makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, to solder. Um, yeah, I'm going to need to keep the uh, the clip on there. I'll do the other side as well because it gets a bit springy. I just have something to hold it in place. Lots of solder. And uh, that neatly covers the, uh, the two pads and that holds that battery holder in place. Just need to do the same with the other side now. Because what you, ca you could do, actually, is that if you bent these out a bit, like that, if you haven't got a clip like this, for example, just bend them out a bit, and that will sort of, and then just force it into the, into the eels. It will probably stay there long enough for you to uh, do the necessary soldering. This is where the thin solder is a bit of a pain in the ass because you've got to really hold it on there for a long time because it needs lots of solder. And uh, let me see, actually that one is okay. That's nice and flush. I will put the clip back on just in case it moves. And there we have it. So that is both battery holders now in place. I think what I'm going to do next is the switches, of which there are many. And because there are many, you've got four connectors per switch, which means you're going to be spending a lot of soldering time on it. So if we start popping them in there and yeah they kind of stay in there quite firmly I was just thinking that perhaps I might need to um, hold them in with something but uh, or bend the pins to get them to grab the uh, the board that might be the case for some of them but um, generally speaking they're sort of clipping in there quite quite firmly. So I should be able to just turn this upside down without them all falling out uh, when I do the soldering. Well that one is uh, that one's fighting me. Now the pin is quite bent on that one. That's why. Right. So yeah, this is gonna take a while but The problem is with these kits is that the pins get bent during transit, um, particularly else uh, ICs and stuff like that. Things, you know, the spend your time bending pins back, and with ICs that are that are or could be electrostatic sensitive, um, not a good thing really. So uh, we're just going to put all of these in. And of course that does mean you've got an awful lot of soldering to do on the back. But do you know what? 
the soldering isn't difficult on these kits at all. Um, there's no surface mount components on this one. Um, it's all very easy. So if you if you're not into soldering or haven't done soldering for a long time or very little, this isn't a bad kit to get to be honest because not a huge amount you can do to go wrong. Right, well I've got all the uh, switches placed into the board like that. What I'm going to do and I don't know if I'm going to video all of this because uh, I think this is going to be a bit boring if I do but if I decide to video the whole lot then you can all scrub through it if uh, you start to feel your eyelids get heavy. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, solder a single pin on each switch um, even just a little bit and what I shall do is um, I'll go through each switch afterwards reheat the soldered pin and make sure the switch is flat against the PCB because that I think is going to be critical because when you're fitting the um, the case around each of the switches unless they're dead flat I think you probably have trouble with the case fitting so it's going to be quite important to make sure that each switch is nice and flat on the board I'm not getting too precious about soldering the pin correctly just at the moment it's just enough solder to hold the pin to the board or the switch to the board and then I can go around each one and check to make sure that they're nice and flat because if they ain't that could be a problem and this is um, something I do with most components when they uh, have got multiple pins uh, unless of course they are really grabbing the board and they're clearly um, firmly wedged in before you solder then um, generally I'll just solder one pin rather like I mean it's the same principle as what we did on the uh, uh, the IC socket so uh, yeah this is the way to do it in my view and the trick is to try and not solder two pins on the same switch and I think that's it so now I shall go through all of them and just have a look down to see if any of them appear to be raised up or not level but they look they all look pretty good to me I think they are all okay All right on the subject. I think they're fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and solder all the pins for these switches, and uh, before we move on to the next stage. Right. Okay. We have got all of the buttons, switches rather, soldered in there, and. Uh, I'm not sure what to do next, to be honest. I think what I am going to do is start looking at um, the uh, the mounting for the LCD and the main board. Now, the main board, uh, the, the LCD, when it's completed, will be um, kind of in this position. I think I've probably slightly exaggerated it, but. Uh, so it'll, it'll be a bit of a slant, so it's easier to read when you when you're actually using the device. Um, the interesting thing is, is that what you've got is you have this riser, which will go in there like that, and then you have this connector, which will fit in to the LCD board like that. And then that will plug into there. And I think basically it is the length of these pins will allow enough 
bend ability, if you like, or flexibility for it to bend down at an angle um, to, to fit the contours of the case and, and give us that, um, that angle, that viewing angle. Which is it's, it's a bit strange, um, but on the other hand, I guess they'd have to design something uh, more sophisticated, even to the degree perhaps of bending these particular pins to a set angle to get it right, and that will just add to the manufacturing cost. Whereas if we just sold that in and you know a little bit of pressure um, on the uh, the contacts to bend them into the right position is uh, probably good enough and um, you know it'll keep the uh, manufacturing costs down so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm gonna well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring oh I have a finger in the way I'm just going to bring that up a bit so that I can now bring in my magnifying glass which will help me see what I'm doing and also help you see what I'm doing hopefully um, and uh, we're just going to um, solder these particular pins in um, I just realized that magnifying glass is absolutely disgusting one of my vices is that I vape I use electric cigarettes and electric cigarettes have this horrible deposit they put on everything Makes it <coughs> sticky and bleh. trust me, it's better than nicotine, that's for sure. But um, it uh, can make a mess of things a bit. Can you see that? I think you can see that just about. I'll bring that there. You'll see it even better then. I can, I can get one in one position. And oh dear, oh dear. Uh, do you really want to see me? Let's bring this forward a little bit like that. It's difficult to describe, but either I can see it or you can see it. None of the twain shall meet. Oh, that's not going to work either. Let me just do it like that. That's better. At the end of the day, I don't really think it's going to make a lot of difference. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an old setup that they've got here with the uh, LCD. Uh, now, have I got that? Let's just make sure that I've got... That's straight. I mean, I suppose in some respects you could even try and um, bend it a little bit before you solder it up. But mm. trouble is, I don't have any instructions, so I'm kind of winging this a bit. Um, I'm just sort of trying to guess how it's going to go together. But uh, oh well, we'll see. <clears throat> Those pins are quite long, so they are going to bend, so there is there is going to be enough. Well, I say there is going to be enough. I, I expect there will be enough give in them to be able to allow that slight angle for the LCD to be positioned in, in the right way. We shall see. Um, you'll see here I'm soldering from right to left, <clears throat> which is really what you should do. Um, because that way, so if I soldered that one, then onto that one, I, you know, I could be affecting this, you know, the the one I've just soldered. Um, but that's one of the dangers of being left-handed. You do everything back to front. Or is it just me? It's probably just me. Um, right. So let's have a look at uh, that soldering on there. I think. Yeah, I think they're okay. The thing is, is that that is now really firm, and therefore you will be able to put a little bit of pressure on that, hopefully enough to allow the bend. Um, and we've got to do similar here um, with this strip, um, which is a bit more wobbly. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to just solder one pen and then 
heat, reheat it while I'm pressing down to make sure I've got it absolutely flush. So we'll choose that pin there. There we go. Taking a little bit of heat to... Has that actually done anything? So you can see it's all at a horrible angle there. So what I'll do is I'll just reheat that. And it's still at a horrible angle. Have a look at that. No, can't seem to get this straight. That's better. Let's have a look. It's still not great. It's still a bit, I mean, it's flapping about a bit because I've only got one pin soldered. So that'll be okay. Oh, it feels as if that pin isn't soldered. But it is, it is. So let's, um, let's solder the very far end. Probably a better way of doing this, but if there is, I haven't got a clue what it is. This is a bit tricky to solder. These don't seem to want to solder on those pads too well. That's a bit messy, and I think I've even got a bridge there. Oh. Well, I've made a lot of pigs here at that. Well, <laughs> situation normal then, really, not. Some, uh, let's just break that away. There we go. Right. Now yeah, that's fine. So I can now just go ahead and solder the rest of those pins, which don't actually seem to solder all that easily. Again, the pads are quite large, with a, there is a slight. I wonder if I can bring this up a little bit. No, that's not going to work. I think there is, might be a slight heat sink effect here. I just need to keep the uh, the heat a little bit longer to allow the solder to flow. Hopefully you can see that. And it doesn't help the fact that, again, I, I always use this fairly <coughs> fine point uh, on the soldering iron. I prefer that because you can, oh, I'm just knocking everything about now, aren't I? Um, you can get a little bit better control. Well, that's not worked, is it, at all? What's going on here? You get a little bit better control and, and precision as to where you want to apply the heat. Again, I'm always conscious of the fact that I don't like keeping the heat on a component for too long because you don't know what damage heat can do to a particular component. It's all right with things like resistors and capacitors, but certainly LEDs and LCDs can be a problem. So, uh, although this shouldn't be a problem because I'm not really anywhere near the LCD itself while I'm soldering, but even so. Uh, yeah, it's not flowing easily. So this solder, you see that one there, look, that is horrible. That's going to re need redoing. There we go. Hmm. Yes, not my uh, finest hour when it comes to soldering. Let me get another bit of solder. You know, these very, very short pieces of solder I've got lying around that I'm trying to use up and... Uh, it's the Scrooge and me coming out. Got to take the view. Well, there's nothing wrong with this solder, so why I chuck it in the bin? Just because that happens to be broken apart from the main roll. There we go. If I was a rich man, I wouldn't worry, but I'm not. Alright. Again, I'm struggling to see this a little bit because of the camera position and 
all the rest of it. And my head is now headbutting the camera. That's what they, that movement is. No, this isn't. This isn't great, but if we'd better off soldering that way around, probably not. I think this is going to be one of those, it's good enough. Right, let's have a bit of a closer look at what we have here. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Ow, that's very hot. But the LCD isn't, so that's okay. Good. So, there we go. And that's the... Uh, that is the LCD board. And just sort of looking at it here, there's other um, unpopulated components here. A couple of capacitors. We've got some jumpers here. There's... I don't know, that looks like there was room there for a small chip. Um, don't know what any of this means, but obviously this this particular board can be repurposed for several different applications, some needing more components than others. So you only populate it with what you need. Um, and uh, yeah. The other thing I was thinking of is that I don't, you know, I was wondering, well, why has it got two batteries? Um, so my immediate reaction was, well, perhaps it's just a, a device that draws a lot of current and it needs the, the power. But I'm thinking that one of them is powering the electronics, the computer side of it, if you like, and the other one is driving the backlight of the uh, LCD. Possibly. I don't know. Who does? The people who made it, I suppose. Okay. Right, so what have we done? We've um, fitted the risers and then uh, let's give this a go. Um, just plug those in a little bit. I don't know how far in they need to plug, but you then got the purchase enough purchase there or enough bendability I guess if there's such a word to uh, be able to install it at that angle or an angle so I'm guessing that'll be okay and I've probably bent it a bit now already look right enough of that Let's move on to these. Now, we have here a piece of paper, as I explained before, which looks like it's just been knocked out on ordinary A4 paper from a home printer. But I'm sure it'll do the job. And what we're going to have to do is cut out each of these use this one put that one to one side is cut each of these out and then make up the buttons now the buttons will be formed from two components piece of transplant plastic transplant yes um, Piece of transparent plastic, put the uh, um, the number or whatever you want to call it into there and then seal it in with that clip, uh, the blue clip and then that clip will then clip directly onto the switches. So what I've got to do is before I can do that is I've got to carefully cut all of these out. Uh, 
in readiness to go into these switches and I'm not going to be able to do that on camera and talk at the same time um, so I'm going to do that now cut all of these out and we can make up the switches so I'll be back with you in a tick right well I've cut up all the um, the button decals or bits of paper as you can see here very carefully and uh, quite simply we just need to get one of these clear plastic caps and one of the blue buttons and then simply I'll grab that one place the paper in there make sure it fits in there neatly and then put the plastic cap on now I don't know what the orientation of these is so I don't think it actually matters but I'm going to put them like that with the two larger pegs um, corresponding in the same direction with the the cap but um, Oh, no, I'm trying to get that in focus there. Focus, damn you. Oh, there you go. Uh, the light isn't great. But there we go. So that, that's as simple as that, really. Not particularly difficult. So uh, just need to get all of these out. And... I'll not lose them all and just start making up the buttons and I suddenly realized actually um, that as far as soldering is concerned we're done there is no more soldering and it's simply going to be a case of um, screwing it all together. The other thing is I need to make sure I've got some batteries that will fit in there. I'm not sure I have, but um, not to worry, I will get some. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to make up all of these buttons. I'm then going to populate each one onto the board. Um, it's actually, I did actually do one a little bit earlier. You know, there's number seven there, look. And uh, we know where the position of these is going to be because we've got this spare which will tell us, and the number seven goes on that one. Ah, uh, well that didn't work. Let's try that again. Let's see if the orientation it makes any difference. No, that's fine. Yeah, so that's how they work. Where's the one I've just done? Uh, well, I've lost that already. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Or was that the one I just did? I can't remember. Um, there's the one I just made up. Oh, dear. I'm getting old. Um, At any rate, I will find that missing one. I shall build up all of these buttons. I shall populate them onto this board. And then I'll show you what the, uh, the result is. Right, so all the batteries are now suitably installed and each one appears to be nice and clicky so before we start building the case we might as well test to see if this thing works because if it doesn't there's no point in building the case and I've managed to find a couple of batteries CR2032s so what I'm thinking of is we plug in the display it wants to go in it's a bit tight all right okay so that's the display in obviously not at the right angle yet we'll come on to that little problem later and then We'll pop in our batteries. 
which fit in there very snugly. And we have a life. Let's uh, dim the lights. So you can see, I'll switch them off all together. And there it is. Well, there is a display. So seven times seven equals 49. Well, who would have thought? I wonder what one plus one is. One plus one equals, good lord, two. Well, I'm not a uh, mathematician, so I'll have to accept that those answers are correct. But there you go, and you can see the uh, backlight effect there. Um, yeah. So far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see how well the batteries hold up on standby. There you go, it's gone off on its own, which is good. Uh, right, so far, I'm happy. And we will see just how well this holds up when it's complete. So, the next thing to do is, now there is actually some protective film on the display. Um, and I'm just trying to see if I can find the edge of it, just to peel that off. And I suppose there's a school of thought, you might as well leave it on there, but it probably, there you go. It gives us a nice, shiny, clear display. I am noticing that the display probably needs to be that way a bit more. Um, oh. Okay, that's fine. You also notice that the, the buttons are all higgledy piggledy because they, they, they got some movement in them. But when we start looking at applying the casing, uh, the case, hopefully, the uh, acrylic piece with the cutouts for the buttons will straighten them all up and make it look decent. But so far, so good. Um, that's working pretty well. Of course, probably one of the things we do want to do is just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, eight. Oh, hang on a minute. Or have we reached the maximum number of digits? Yeah, it's probably the maximum number of digits or something. Try mode colouring. I don't know if you can see any of that. Uh, <coughs> hang on, we are we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's starting to look good. So what I need to do is now I need to tidy up around here a bit and get the casing hardware and the case itself together uh, so that we can go and finish off the final stage, stages of building this kit. And it looks like we're gonna end up with quite a nice little calculator. The resistor calculation uh, facility built in, which will be good. So let me get myself sorted out. Right, okay, so now let's start trying to put this beastie together. Um, this is the back plate, um, always worth giving them a darn good clean because if you get dust inside them after you finish building the kit it's going to look horrible and then you're going to start stripping it apart so that you can clean the acrylic and get back its good looks. Now I'm trying to work out exactly how it goes. Now on the board there's one, two, three, four, there's a couple of holes there and there's a hole there. 
So, I'm just trying to, of course I don't even know which way up this board needs to go, does it need to go that way? Ah. Well, it's interesting actually, those, those, those holes across the top there wouldn't be doing much of anything. So, what I'm going to try and do, right, okay, so I'm offering up the, the, the PCB to the plate, as I say, I haven't got any instructions for this, um, what we have got here, is just, I'll just move the camera over a little bit, you can see I've organised the screws into piles, and we've got acrylic spaces here, these are all still stuck together. We've got four long screws. We've got four nylon spaces, four large uh, nuts, and a whole bunch of little nuts and small screws. Now these, I'm pretty sure, will be holding the clear plastic acrylic um, case together, or most of them will be. Um, not sure about the others just yet. I would imagine these black ones are going to be uh, possibly holding down the plate that covers the buttons or goes around the buttons. Um, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. But just fixing the the PCB to the plate, what I'm thinking is that um, they're going to need spaces because obviously you've got all the uh, you got all the pins sticking out from the solder, so that's going to need to be raised up from the uh, bring the camera back a little bit. It's going to need to be raised up from the plate. Um, so I think we're dealing with. That one. Ah, oh, well, this is going to be a pain in the bum, isn't it? So we want one in there. And one in there. So I'm making this up as I go along. Is that right? No, it's not right. I've just screwed up for. No, it's the wrong two. Right, start again. I know somebody else on YouTube's actually built one of these and I might have to cheat and go and have a look to see how he built his um, because I think he's got the benefit of um, instructions. I think we need one there as well. It's going to be interesting. I now need to try and lay this flat. Boom. <laughs> Every single one fell out, you pig. Okay. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. They really are Krypton Factor, these cases. And if you don't know what Krypton Factor is, then Google it. It's an old British TV show. Might exist in other countries. States, for example, I don't know. I hope I didn't lose a screw there. Um, how am I going to do this? Let me um, let me see if I can get clever. It'll be a first for me to get clever. Ah! All bar one. There's always one. I'm, I'm not thinking very straight, and I'm sure there's a better way of doing it than this. Hurrah! Right, there we go. So I've got all those. Ugh, damn it. Hang on. That one needs to be there. Oh, dear, oh dear. You didn't realise this was a comedy show in reality, did you? Okay, there we go. Spaces. I'm thinking these will be the spaces needed 
Um, we'll have to break some of these off. As I say, I think I am going to go and have to cheat just to double check that I'm doing this correctly because I'll be brutally honest, I haven't got a clue if I am. And then hopefully, oh, that actually fell into place quite neatly. That fell into place very neatly. Right. I'm thinking now we just pop the nuts on on each one. They do actually go on quite neatly, I have to say. Oh, here we go. Famous last words. I'm not very good with some um, fiddly things. There's a joke there somewhere as well, isn't there? I'll get that on there. I don't know, the uh, end user experience of this is a bit suspect to say the least. I'm, I'm <laughs> just, just not doing this. Get out of it. Right. Hang on a minute. Oh, I've switched it on. Well, I unplugged the LCD. I hope that hasn't blown it all up. And the one at the top. Like that. So it's standing just proud of the circuit board. Obviously, point to note here is make sure you don't leave the leads too long when you are snipping them off from the... Uh, it's all right, the switches. The switches didn't need any cutting at all. It's, it's going to be the components up here, the resistors and stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I guess I'll have to um, tighten those a little bit, so I do need to get myself a, a Phillips-style screwdriver I've got somewhere on somewhere here we go need to watch this acrylic casing it is actually quite brittle so don't over tighten anything just make it snug of course the other thing is you don't want to tighten up too much and warp the board or anything silly like that just enough to make them happy and firmly in place. And the final one. Okay, so that's the board on the bottom plate. Now these are the other pieces, let's get that out of the way, these are the other pieces we have. Like that, and then we have this piece, which will obviously go over the keys, and then this piece, which will go around the display. I'm trying to think. Obviously, these two pieces are the sides, and you can see the angle there that the um, LCD needs to achieve. So, let's some start offering this up to get a rough idea of how it all goes together, and that'll give us an idea of where. Um, 
all the hardware goes. I'm thinking that one goes in there. Like that. Uh, this small one. will go in like that. And that will be held in place by the others. We then have, oops, uh, I should be cleaning these as I go along, but I just want to offer it all up at the moment, just to get an idea of how everything should fit together. I think that will go on a little bit of wiggling on there. Yeah. And then that's when I've got the display in. We'll go on like that. And I think I'm right. I think what I need to do, one of the things I need to do, is to actually bolt this onto the LCD screen directly before we do anything else. Yeah, I need to. Now you've got at this end, you've got where the light, the LED backlight is, and at this end, you've got nothing, so it's, it, it's kind of squiffy. So I'm wondering if that needs spacers. I'm guessing it does. Um, but I'm not sure. But you can see roughly how it's coming together like that. So I'm going to do a bit of homework just to double check where these little nylon spacers go. And I've actually only got two of these left. I may not need these at all. I'm wondering if these nylon spacers actually need to go in there. Um, I think that's the only thing I want to double check, but it would make sense that they do. And I'm also thinking that these black ones are meant for the display. It would kind of make sense because it would be a bit more colour coordinated if you like but, and then these long ones they'll go in there in fact I'm pretty sure that's how it must go yeah do you know what I'm going to go with my gut feeling um, so on that case what we're going to do is put all the screws the black screws into this plate. I don't know what these two hongs are at the side. They are, I know what they are. Right, okay, I'm getting this now. So, oh, here we go again. Putting things upside down. You can't see this yet, can you? You will, I promise. Right, let's get this out of the way. Okay, so we need the display to be that way. Is it going to be that way? Talk amongst yourselves while the idiot sorts it out. Yes, I think it's like that. I mean, these, these, you know, without instructions, these kits are a puzzle. And if you like puzzles, that's great. If you're like me, who hates bloody puzzles, it's not so much fun. Right. So they go through there. We put the spacers in. So that means that the LED, LCD rather, will be 
properly level. God, I hope this is right. That one's fallen out already. Rats. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, this is just a comedy of errors, isn't it? I hope you're feeling my pain. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of trying to think it through as I go along. Um, and I think that's the way it goes. So let's put these spaces back in. I'm probably going out of picture all the time as well. That goes on like that. Right, I'm pretty sure that's the right orientation. Um, yeah, I'm having a problem with this because perhaps I haven't got that in orientation right. No, I haven't. It should be that way, shouldn't it? That's why I'm having problems. Let's try again. Let's just offer it up. Yes, it should be that way. Yep, it should be like that. And I was going the wrong way. Right, okay. So. I'm getting there, honestly. I am getting there. I am going to finish this kit before I die. Right, let's try one more time, and hopefully the last time. It's a bit of a shame that download link doesn't work for the instructions, because if it did work, my oh, my blood pressure would be in a lot better condition than it is at the moment. Right, so assuming I've got this right, then it's actually the large nuts that we need. Um, on these particular screws, large nuts kind of appropriate for this video in some respect. Come on. Um, I mean, I could have gone and online and checked what others have done correctly, um, who got the instructions. But where's the fun in that? Nice to work things out for yourself sometimes. Okay, so again, just let's do them up snugly. Don't over tighten them. They don't need to be over tightened. There's, oh, that's tight. Um, because and also I'm just I'm just looking down there just to make sure there's no warping. <clears throat> so I haven't over tightened them. Right. Okay. Now, let's put that to one side and let's go back to the main case. Right. I'm thinking that now the way that these kits work or the cases work is that some of them have got these little cross-shaped cutouts in them and the way that works is that you put a nut in that little opening there the screw goes down there into that nut um, and it actually once you get it together they they hold together very firmly and I'll just use an example um, I was going to use an example here, but I don't think this particular device used them. No, I, I can. I think. Uh, I was trying to find a kit where it's got those on there, but I haven't got anything to hand at the moment, so we shall just persevere. But yeah, so if we we clip all this back together again, offer it all together, um, 
I think, actually, before I do that, I think I'm going to need to plug the LCD back in. And also that will give us a rough idea of, I'm just thinking actually if I get that out of the way, because what I don't know is whether I need to push the LCD in as far as it can go, which I have done there, or whether it needs to pull out a little bit. And I think what we'll do is we'll start cleaning the inside uh, of the case, because that's the bit you can't clean once it's together. And now we can see the angle that we have to achieve. LCD and you know that is really really springy really quite tight and also is that hole going to I think it will actually because that hole there needs to marry up with that there oh this is going to be interesting Okay, let's try and get most of the case parts back together. I'm going to loosen off, in fact, yeah, okay, I'm just wondering whether I would be better off fitting everything else in, like the keyboard cover, before I do the LCD. I'm just not sure. It's too late and I'm too tired to think straight at the moment. What I could do actually is that back plate, um, which has got that cross affair that I just mentioned, I see no reason why, because that back plate has got nothing to screw it at the top, it just gets held in place by the two side panels. So I'm thinking that it would actually be a good idea to uh, stick that back plate in now uh, and get it screwed down. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and there is an art to these, I have to admit. I'm not necessarily saying that I've mastered it, but what you have to do, or well, the way I do it, is just carefully balance one of the screw one of the nuts in in the recess which I've just done and then with the power of magic and a lot of luck and the assistance of a screwdriver hopefully yeah we can Batten that one down, which we have done. Good. So that's the back plate in. That's nice and firm. Um, okay. All the other transparent parts are held in by their by the corresponding parts. So that's that one. that one then the front piece again I'm just cleaning up the uh, inside bit not worrying about the outside bit because obviously we can get to that to clean easily oops okay so that's that and then I think we will 
get this on next because of course the trick is getting all of these buttons squared up there there we go and those are, those buttons are pretty flush unless I could ah oh, wait a minute I've got to push it down a bit so you've got to make sure all these little lugs these are in, these are in, that one's in, that one's in, but this one here, there's always one, isn't there? Always one that just wants to make your life completely not bloody miserable. Right, come on, there you go. There she is, there you are. Uh, and the buttons are a little bit more raised, and they all seem free. Good. <clears throat> so, this is where the long screws come into play. So I'm going to put all the long screws in. It's happening. It is happening. Um, and it's switched on, look at that. So it is working. And now we hold those in with nuts it's that one and that one gone silent because the concentration is absolutely immense. There are small plumes of smoke coming out my ears at the moment. There we go. Now, when, when I tighten these up, I'm going to be fairly conservative with the amount of pressure that I, I do so because what I don't want to do is to warp the black plastic plate because if you do that then it's likely to cause the buttons to stick having said that it is right on top of the uh, side plate so that's probably unlikely unless you put massive pressure on it which obviously i'm not going to do so that one's Yeah, you do need to be a little bit careful. Don't over tighten them. Otherwise it can affect the performance of the buttons. There we go. That's it. Right, so the final bit is to sort out our springy uh, LCD which needs to come down I think the first thing I need to do is to push it back in a bit, like that. It's uh, you can see on the edge there; it's not flush, um, but it can't be. But it is right against the side panel of that plate, and if we put a screw in at the side hopefully that should run down that eel which it does like that so i just need to put a little nut in there and see if i can grab that but i am having to hold it down with the finger because if i let go it's going to spring back up again and second thoughts in some ways it would have been better to physically bend the long pins from the main board because that is now constantly under st under stress, which can't be a good a good thing for the uh, the solder joints. On the upside, there are a lot of joints there, or a lot of uh, connections, so 
the stress on any one of them is not going to be that great. Um, but even so, it might have been better to have done that. At any rate, I'm not going to go and pull it all apart and try that again. Because uh, frankly, I will have probably lost the will to live by then. This is very fiddly to get the... The trouble is if I push the nut too far and it falls inside the case, then there will be much bad language. I don't want to use that on this channel if I can avoid it. Right. The nut has been placed. Oh, God. The screw has grown wings and learnt to fly. And I've caught it. And once I've got one of these in, hopefully, it's not going to be too difficult on the other side because this will uh, take some of the pressure away. Is that going in? Yes, it is. It's caught it. And it's screwed down. Right, so I'm hoping this one will be a little easier. See that that is a little bit. Oh, I'm going to switch it on again. Yeah. God, this video is going to be going on for hours, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it, it, you know, in terms of lining up, it's not brilliant, but it's pretty flexible. And there we go. That last one goes in. And you can see there how the screw system works. It's quite clever, actually. There we have it. There is the completed desktop calculator, KK Moon, from Amazon. What I am going to do is have a quick look at the instructions that I do have, remember these? And uh, we'll have a look at the uh, the way the um, resistor calculator works. I'm, so I'm just slightly looking at those buttons because these ones at the top seem to be more proud of the well, perhaps they're not. Perhaps it's uh, an illusion. But once it's all screwed together, that is nice and robust. And, uh, oh, there is one thing I have forgotten. We have little rubber feet. And I think we should make use of these little rubber feet and stick them... Where should I stick them? Answers on a postcard. Let's put them right in the corner. I'll stop it. Stop it dancing around the table when you're using the uh, calculator. One thing I haven't mentioned is the cost of this kit. It's about eighteen pounds. That is quite expensive. Now, if you wanted a calculator, and quite a sophisticated calculator, scientific one, you wouldn't need to spend anything like £18, and it would be a nice professionally made one by Casio or somebody like that. Um, but it wouldn't be as fun as this one. There we go. It's now standing on its own four feet. There we go. Right, on. It works. Can you see that? It's... Uh, and uh, I wonder if uh, 2 plus 2 still equals 4. 
Good Lord, it does. Wow. Science. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to just quickly look at the instructions and we'll have a go at calculating a resistor value. Right, OK. Um, I'm going to turn that light off so you can just see the display a bit better. I have a resistor here. I have absolutely no idea what value it is because, like I said before, I'm not one of these people that um, can tell what the value of resistors is just by looking at them. But you can see this one is... I can't, I can't get this in focus. This is not going to work. Oh, you might be able to see it without the magnifying glass. So what's that? Brown, black, green, gold. So that's four rings. Now, the calculator will cover both four and five ring resistors. And let's get you into focus. And the way this works is, switch it on. Press mode, now you've got colour ring, and you can see it's five. Well, we want four, so we press that button. That gives us to four. And now we want brown, black, green. So, brown, black, green, and gold. So that's saying that that is a 1,000K at 5%. So, let's just put that to one side. I have no idea if that's correct. I can't tell just by looking at it. So let's bring the meter. So, let's bring that to 6K. Uh, and let's just measure the resistance. Hang on a minute. I had the wrong setting. That doesn't seem to want to measure. Well, that's interesting. Why is that? I wonder if that is actually an inductor. Let's see if I've got anything. I've got this tiny little one here, which I did actually have a quick look at earlier on, but I, I can't read it. Let's have a squint. If I can... I can't, I can't, I can't read the colours on that. Um, right, let's see if I can find another resistor. Right, I've got another resistor here, and the colour on this one is... Yellow... Violet, I think they call that. I call it purple, but violet. Yellow, violet, black and gold. So let's try that. So it's four rings again. Mode. And bring that down to four rings. And what do we say? It was yellow, violet, black, which does nothing, apparently, and gold. So that is 47 at 5%. I'm guessing that's 47 ohms with a 5% tolerance. Okay, let's put the calculator out of the way. And let's put it... Uh, so we've got the meter on 600... 600 ohms and see what that reads 47 ohms there we go spot on I don't know what's going on with this one I've got a feeling that might be an inductor I don't know but there you go uh, well it certainly read that perfectly so I'm just going to put that down to experience and say that is a success um, so there you go that's the KK Moon calculator um, I think it does other stuff as well. What have we got? Um, uh, well, it looks like it can also measure um, 
the value of an LED's series resistance, but that's beyond my capabilities. And also the conversion from decimal number, hexadecimal number, the conversion from hexadecimal number to decimal number. I can't imagine I'm ever going to want to use that. Square root function, which is fair enough. Um, and it's also got a backspace key as well, so I suppose let's have a quick look at that. Because that I can under understand. So if I want to multiply 75, oops, made a mistake, backspace, I wanted it to be 74. Great. Times 12 equals 888, and I'm sure it does. There you go. That's the... Uh, calculator desktop kit and I I'm I rather like that it's very robust once it's all together um, as I said I'm not keen on the idea of uh, those bits get some light back onto the subject I'm not so keen on the way that you have to bend those pins there so you've got so you can achieve this angle but it's not too bad it's not too bad and it ain't going anywhere because you've got all of these individually soldered pins and obviously likewise on the uh, LCD board as well. But uh, yeah, I'm liking this calculator. That's a nice kit. As I say, it's a bit expensive for £18. Pounds. Um, I don't know if this particular one's on Banggood. If it is, it'll be cheaper. I don't think it is. I can't recall seeing this one on Banggood. Um, I'm sure if it was on there, I would have come across it by now. But I'm sure you'll tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway, that was a long one, wasn't it? Um, comedy of errors, but I like to show where I go wrong and where things aren't 100% perfect. I don't edit out the mistakes. Um, I'm no expert. I'm no professional. I'm a hobbyist. I have no background in electronics, <laughs> as you've already told, been able to work out. Um, but I do like making these kits and it's nice to have something to show for it in the end. Um, I do have some other bits and pieces uh, kit wise to put together so obviously they'll be coming up later. Um, I'm going to be doing some other videos hopefully on other uh, subjects that interest me. Uh, mobile technology, I did one on the, the uh, Lenovo yoga book was the last video I did before this one which I hope you found interesting. Um, I do like tech of all sorts. Also into vaping. Um, I do a lot of vaping. Uh, I haven't smoked cigarettes for years, so I might do some vaping stuff as well, just, just for interest. J you know, somebody might find it useful. Um, uh, or if somebody is suffering from insomnia, I'm sure that my videos will put them to sleep. Any rate, I hope I didn't put you to sleep on this one. I hope you found it entertaining and a bit of fun. And... Um, Hope you enjoyed it. Um, until the next time, take care. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.